What's up everybody, it's Sean with 614 Inc. Reviews and How To's. Coming at you today with a quick, easy DIY how-to video on how to re-season, restore, refinish a cast iron skillet. Um, this cast iron skillet is not in the greatest shape, but it is also not in the worst shape by any stretch. You can see that there's a bunch of food that's burnt and stuck on here and a bunch of rust that's starting to form surface rust. Um, so it definitely needs some TLC, um, but it's not desolate. I just wanna keep uh, pointing that out for a second because you will be surprised if you've never done this, how easy it is to restore a cast iron skillet. I've had them before where they literally looked as if they needed to be thrown away and there was no salvation. And with very minimal effort, you're able to turn it into something that looks as if it's almost brand new. And so um, you can see here again, there's burnt on um, you know, food uh, contamination left over. And like I say, a thin layer of surface rust that started to form. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing to the sink and we are gonna use an SOS pad with soap. Whenever you use soap and water on a cast iron skillet, you are essentially stripping it down to its bare surface. Cast iron, in very short time, when unprotected, um, will start to form surface rust very quickly. So if you have one of these and you leave it outside overnight, which is exactly what happened to this one, we used it on a camping trip, um, it was used to grill hot dogs on a fire, and then the moisture, it didn't even rain that night, um, you know, sat and, and rested on the pan and just that quickly from the seasoning burning off from the hot fire and the moisture from the air, the surface rust started to form and this stuff is essentially caked on here and is, is not coming off without a fight. So we're going to go ahead and this is a perfect opportunity to just strip it with our SOS pad and start from scratch. Um, so I'll take you over to the sink and we'll go through that process and I'll show you how quickly these things clean up with very minimal effort. One thing I will say, this is a fairly small skillet. Um, this is a 10 inch. If you have a big 12 inch or even larger, um, or if yours is in desolate condition, like I previous talked uh, about, you know, I've had some that were in really, really bad shape and you're gonna need to use a lot of elbow grease what I recommend is don't do it indoors in the kitchen because you are gonna splash around a lot of rusty water and SOS pads, once the soap starts to wear off, the um, steel wool forms like a, a black water and it actually will stain your skin and it's just really messy. Um, it wipes off your skin very easily, but you'll see that you'll have you know black spots all over your skin from the steel wool. So I would recommend, and what I like to do, is taking a wash tub um, it can even be like a, a, a moving container, just a plastic container that is big enough and, and deep enough to submerge your pan in. Fill that up with maybe a, a couple drops of dishwashing liquid and some warm water and your SOS pad. Go outside, scrub it in that wash tub, and rinse it off with your garden hose outside just to prevent um, a bunch of major cleanup inside your kitchen. This one's not so bad that I feel like I need to go that route, so we're just going to do it in the sink. So I'll take you with me. Um, we'll do a time lapse so you don't have to watch it in real time uh, on, on how quickly this thing cleans up. And then uh, we'll go over the rest of the process after that. See you in a second. So you saw how easy it is to scrub this thing. I think it took about eight minutes time um, to get this basically to a brand new surface. This thing is every bit as clean as it was the day that we bought it. Any of those little imperfections you see there, they're just uh, characteristics of the cast iron. I mean, me looking at this thing in person, there's not a single mark or soot mark or burn mark or food particle left over on this thing. This is as clean uh, literally as it was the day I bought it. Um, and so one thing I want to briefly touch upon is you probably saw in the time lapse when I was cleaning it that after I was done with the SOS pad, 
I put a couple drops of dishwashing liquid on it and scrubbed it with a traditional dishwashing sponge. I like to do that to remove any steel wool fibers that may be left over and to remove any of the soap that the steel wool comes um, pre-coated with because I just trust cooking on a traditional dishwashing liquid far more than I do the soap that comes infused in a, a SOS pad. So without dwelling too much on those simple things, um, the one thing I will say too is after you've cleaned it and dried it with a towel, go ahead and pop it on your cooktop or stovetop for like two to three minutes on medium to high heat just to bake out any water that may be left over in the pores of the pan. We keep talking about how porous cast iron is and even though it might look dry after you've dried it with a wash rag or washcloth or paper towel or whatever you dry it with, there still may be some water trapped down in the pores and what we're about to get to, you want your oil to be able to penetrate and soak down into those pores so that you may properly season your pan and that can't happen if there's still water uh, embedded within those pores. So just pop it on for a couple minutes to cook out any of that water that might be left behind. Then let it cool so that it, you see how mine is. I can touch it and it's not burning me or anything like that. Let it cool so that it's uh, um, cool enough to be able to be handled. Once you've done that, let's get into oils. Um, when I first got my pan, the term seasoning was a little bit intimidating because I didn't really understand it. It's just a really glorified way of saying we're going to coat the pan with oil and then we're going to bake it in. Um, and it's really simple to do that. And if you overwatch these videos, you'll see this is one of those things that people argue about what type of oils are acceptable. I personally love a chef called Joshua Wiseman. If you guys aren't familiar, check out his videos. He's great. Um, after listening to him talk, you can really use any oil that you prefer. You don't have to go out and buy some high dollar fancy flaxseed oil that you're never going to use again, although it may be one of the best oils to season a pan, and I don't debate that. It's not absolutely necessary to use something like that in order to have success at seasoning your pan. And so I'm just going to use extra virgin olive oil today because it's what I cook with and it's what I have readily available. You can use vegetable, canola, avocado, extra virgin, flax, whatever you have at home that you like to cook with, use it. You'll be fine as long as you follow the correct procedure. And what that procedure is, is we're going to dump about two to three tablespoons of our favorite oil in our pan. And then we're going to take a paper paper towel and we're liberally going to apply it all around the pan, making sure that we get every nook and cranny, top, bottom, handle, everything. Every square inch of this pan, we're going to coat it with oil. Once we have coated it with oil, we are then going to take a dry paper towel and we are going to buff it off, literally trying to remove all of the oil that we just applied. Don't worry, you can't because it's very porous. So that oil is going to really work its way into the pores of this pan and fortify it with that seasoned coating. And once we've done that, you just heard the oven preheat. We're going to go ahead and pop it in the oven at 500 degrees for one hour. After that one hour timer expires, we're just going to shut the oven down and leave our pan in there to naturally cool with the oven. Once that has happened, you're done. You're ready to start cooking. And from that point forward, as long as you clean it properly and care for it properly, uh, it will last you for generation to generation to generation. Your kids can pass it to their kids who can pass it to their kids. That's the beauty of cast iron. It's indestructible and it, it really does give you a nice even heat and, and helps um, make a dish turn out uh, a lot better than cooking on some warped Teflon pan that, that you know, is only going to last you a couple years before the coating starts to wear off and work its way into your food. So anyhow, we'll do a time lapse video. I'll show you how I apply this. Um, we'll pop it in the oven and we'll pull it out and I'll show you the final product. All right. Alright everybody, the one hour timer has expired 
and I went ahead and pulled the pan. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. I only pulled this because I wanted to show you guys the final product. It is still very warm. I can feel heat radiating off of it from about six inches above. 500 degrees is very hot. So again, when your timer goes off, just let your uh, pan naturally cool in the oven. I am only pulling this one to show you guys the final product. Um, this pan is uh, perfectly seasoned and ready to be cooked on. You can see how well it turned out, how evenly coated it is. Um, it looks, I mean, from where we started to where we are now, this thing looks brand new. And not only that, but it is non-stick. It is gonna taste great because it's been seasoned with uh, a high quality cooking oil and it's um, got a, a, a defensive coating on it to help uh, resist rust. And so, you know, like I've been saying, as long as you care for it in this way, you know, this thing is gonna last you generations and generations and you can pass it down to your kids and they can pass it down to their kids if they want. Um, the one thing I do wanna make a really quick note of, and I'm gonna make another video where I actually demonstrate all this, but I wanna make this a complete video as far as information goes so you know how to restore, refinish, and reseason and care for your pan um, completely. And so I just wanna explain, now that this pan is seasoned, it is ready to be cooked on, how to go ahead and clean it after you've cooked on it. And again, I'm gonna post a video where I actually demonstrate all this, so please subscribe to the channel and if you're interested in, you can watch that video. But I just wanna make sure that I don't leave you with an incomplete video and you don't know what to do from here forward. And so what you're gonna do after you cook your first dish on, on this pan, like I say, this thing is seasoned and ready to go. So let's say that we threw a steak on here tonight and, and, and cooked a nice bone-in ribeye or something. When we were done and we pulled our steak off, at that point, um, we're just gonna take the pan and whatever residual juices or oils are left in this pan, we're gonna go ahead and dump them all into a glass bowl or a glass cup where after they cool, we can dispose of them. What we don't wanna do is let any oils or juices or butters or whatever have you that we're cooking with cool and dry in this pan because then it becomes a real nightmare to clean and at that point if you do do that you may need to start from scratch and strip it like what we had to do here today and start all over from the very beginning we've worked really hard to get this pan to where it is and so we want to make sure that we clean it properly moving here forward so that our upkeep is a lot less labor intensive than what we had to do here today and so the way that we do that again we're going to dump any um, hot cooking oils or juices once we've completed our dish into a um, you know, hot liquid safe container, whether it be a big coffee mug or a glass bowl or something like that, where when they do dry, it's much easier to clean out. Once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and take a paper towel and very carefully so that we don't burn ourselves, wipe out as much grease or residue as we can and discard of that paper towel. So then we will have a hot pan that has essentially been cleaned and freed of any major juices or oils or butters or cooking debris. Once the pan then cools, we will go ahead and take some coarse kosher salt, just a couple tablespoons, maybe one or two, you don't have to go crazy, and then a little bit of water, just enough in there to form a paste. And then what they make is they make a chain mail scrubber. And basically it's a rubber um, sponge with a chain mail coating over top of it and it's very um, coarse. And so from this point forward, after we've seasoned this pan, we don't need to use any more soap. We're just gonna use that coarse kosher salt and that chain mail scrubber and some warm water out of the tap and we are gonna make a paste um, in the pan and we're just gonna scrub it and clean the pan of any more debris or any more stuck on cooking stuff that pouring it and wiping it with the paper towel didn't remove. Once we've done that and scrubbed it free of any debris and oils and things, we're just gonna rinse it out with uh, tap water. Once we've done that, we're gonna dry it real nice and clean with a paper towel. Once all of that has been completed, we will go ahead and let the pan dry. We can even if we want, throw it on the cooktop on medium high heat for a couple minutes to bake that water out. Once it has cooled again, we are gonna put another tablespoon or so of olive oil or whatever our favorite cooking oil is inside, clean it and oil it with the paper towel, buff it again, and then bake it on the oven again on medium high heat until we see smoke. Once we see smoke, we know that that oil has set in, 
we can pull it from the heat and store it wherever we want to. If you store it in a drawer or a cabinet, obviously you want to let it cool before you put it away. I store mine in my oven, and so even if it's warm, I can throw it right in the oven and let it naturally cool and be done. And as long as you follow that cleaning process, every time you've cooked with it, after you've done this initial season, you won't have to go through this big, rigorous, one hour bake time um, ordeal again. And so again, I will post another complete video where I illustrate a video of me doing all that, but I wanted to make sure I at least went over the process with you in this video so that it was a complete instructional video on how to reseason, restore, um, and, and care for your pan from start to finish. And so I hope you guys find this useful. Um, again, if you uh, like it, please subscribe to the channel. Without your viewership, videos like this aren't possible. And I really appreciate your guys' support. So thanks very much. Take care.